Welcome to this video series about improvising by Sietse de Vries. You can support this video series by donating the amount of your choice to Sietse de Vries' Patreon account, which can be found by searching Sietse de Vries Patreon or by finding the link in the description below the video. Enjoy the video. So, as you can see, something very strange is going on here. I have a score in front of me. It's not the end of the world. Um, I don't fell off my beliefs. But it's actually sometimes important to get your examples from good composers, of course. And, like I said before, you can only improve your improvisation by also knowing how to read and to write. It's the same as in a language. You can't make any progress in a language if you only listen to it and speak it, but if you not read the language, if you don't read any books, you can't get information from people that are probably smarter than you are. So, by all means, it's very important actually to play from scores. So, um, let's see why I use this book today. Well, uh, it's a well-known title by now, we have used it before. It's the German hymn Christus, der ist mein Leben. And in front of me I have the book of Pachelbel, or Pachelbel, or however he is pronounced nowadays. A German composer, uh, quite close to Bach, actually. And um, the good part is that he is very organized. It's not genius music, but it's well-crafted well thought through and that therefore it's a great means to practice some things and today I actually want to take a big step because what we did so far with harmonizing is using the triad in the right hand and the bass note in the left hand so when we talk about this hymn Christus der ist mein Leben we harmonized it for example like this And that means you know how to use triads in a close harmony, meaning that the triad is always uh, as close as possible together. You know all the different chords by now, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and maybe an inversion or two, maybe a little passing note. If you know all these elements, you can make a good harmonization like this. But now let's compare it to the harmonization that Pachelbel writes in his book. And for a reason, this sounds more sophisticated. And that has to do with the way the triads are organized. Of course, the little passing notes and things like that, suspensions are nice too. And that's part of the things that are quite easy to learn. But the difficulty is actually to go from close harmony to open harmony. So let's analyze what happens here. He starts exactly like we would normally start. So with a one and then a five in inversion, a one, a four in inversion, but then some interesting things happen. So let's have a closer look. For example, this chord, uh, D major, a five, normally we would play it like this. 
but now it actually sounds much more refined because the triad is divided over two hands. So I have the melody obviously in my right hand, uh, then I have the alto also in the right hand, but that's actually not the fifth that you would expect, but it's the third. And the fifth is now in the left hand together with the bass note. So we get a very nice open chord. The difficulty is, of course, that you don't have the safety anymore of knowing exactly which triad you are playing because it's three notes together and you just invert them. Now you really have to know which notes make up the triad and how can you divide them over two hands. So to practice that, it's probably a good idea to start with a simple scale, uh, scaling up in C major. Let's start there. So the melody is just going from C to C. And then you try to find interesting chords that are divided over two hands. So it already starts with the first chord. Let's not play the whole chord with the right hand, but let's use the left hand as well. The second chord on the D could be a 5, but let's uh, invert it in a way that the B is now in the bass. That means we have the G in the right hand, and since the B is the third in the chord, it's actually not nice to double it in the alto. So you only need the G and the D in the right hand. And then remember the parallel thirds we talked about. If you just uh, keep the soprano and the bass in parallel, you can just go to the next chord in a very nice, elegant way. And let's do a four now in inversion. Now I have the melody and the alto in the right hand, and actually the C and the A in the bass, so it's an inversion again. And the next chord, I could go very nicely to the next chord, because that's part of actually making open harmonies. You really look for the best way to go from one chord to the other. And actually not in a way that you only think uh, vertical in a chord, what's the next triad, but also horizontal, what is every voice doing? And if I do this, I'm going from, from a 4 to a 5 now. It sounds really nice because my melody is going up, my bass is going down, and actually the inner voices do the same, so that's actually very good harmonizing. And now I could do a four again, but then I really have to reorganize all the voices, so I can probably play it like this. And the bass is always fine when you have a root position to double it, just try to avoid doubling thirds. And now I have the B in the soprano, so let's do a dominant seven chord, a five seven, like this. And now I can do the same trick. The voices at the outside, they go further, so the B goes to the C, the D in my bass goes to the C, and then I can do the same with the inner voices, they also move towards each other. So then you end up with the chords that we know, but in a complete different way. You really have to reorganize all the voices. You have to know where the voices are and how you can divide them over two hands. So in the end we have something like this. That's of course only one possibility. It's also nice to think of the, the way back in a, in a totally different way, like this. And it actually helps to write down uh, a few of these examples, because then you can actually see where is every voice going to. So for example, now sometimes I had only three voices instead of four, but it was actually not true. It were still four voices, but sometimes you double one voice. So the alto and the soprano go to the same voice, because the voice leading is more beautiful that way. 
The thing is, you have to do this a lot to learn it, and you have to develop your ears in a way that you really can tell this is the best solution. So this is not something you can do from one week to the other. You have to practice it a lot. So that's wh wh why we are going to use this partita of Pachelbel, the next few videos, to demonstrate how you can make variations. And most of the variations are based on this open harmony. So that's actually two for the price of one. You can really learn how to make more variations, but we also have a strong emphasis on how you can make good harmony in an other way than we did so far. And uh, I'm actually trying to get you to compose as well, because composing is nothing else than, than externalize your thoughts. It's the same as writing. You have some thoughts that you want to speak or say, or you only think about it. But when you write it down, you really know exactly, you have to articulate exactly what you mean. And that's very useful, actually. You learn a lot by doing that. So uh, we probably end up with a, a composition of your own on a nice hymn tune. But let's start with this beautiful harmonization of uh, Pachelbel. Try to make a harmonization of your own, of a hymn, uh, and also try to do this exercise with scaling up and down and using the triads in an open way. Good luck with that.